Well, Jesus tells us in Matthew 6, 19 through 21, to lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven. This uh, brief video presentation is designed to reach two audiences. Those who are born again and who are actively engaged in laying up for themselves treasures in heaven. That's one category. The other category is for people who are uh, disciples of Jesus Christ or are going to become disciples of Jesus Christ and don't fully understand what Jesus is talking about, uh, about laying up for ourselves uh, treasures in heaven. So I'm going to just share a little bit about that topic. Um, I'm probably going to do a series. We'll see how the Holy Spirit leads, but uh, um, I, I feel a responsibility to speak on this topic, to encourage, to exhort Christians to try to get a better understanding of what Jesus is telling us to do, laying up rewards for ourselves in heaven. This is one of the most silent issues I think there is in Christianity. Uh, there's a voice out there that says, oh, we shouldn't be laying up rewards for ourselves. We lay them up for God. Well, that's true. But Jesus didn't say that, did he? He said, lay up your treasures for yourself. Well, I don't want to be thinking about eternal rewards. I just want to get to heaven and hear, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. Don't we all? But Jesus didn't say that in Matthew 16, uh, Matthew uh, 6, 19 through 21 either, did he? He said, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Well, it took me many years to get some understanding of what the Holy Spirit wants us to understand about this very, very important little treasure uh, put in God's Word. And it goes back uh, to a time when um, I was in great turmoil many years ago. I was in great turmoil, a lot of physical pain, a lot of frustration in the Precious Testimonies ministry. Um, Christians found more reasons not to share their morning and testimony than those who did. Uh, it seemed like nobody cared about sharing their testimony, and that's what God called me uh, to do, was publish born-again testimonies and to present the gospel message. And, uh, well, that's well and good, but if you can't get Christians to cooperate with you, how, you know, how do you do that? And that's where I was. Very frustrated, to see the, say the least. Um, God gave me a very supernatural dream. I've never had one since. I've had dreams from God, but they were usually just dreams that God was trying to warn me about evil that was going to come my way and pray about it, seek him about it, so that I could have some preparation uh, if, in fact, uh, that legal, that not legal, that, that, you know, the attack from the enemy prospered. Many times he'd show me that so it couldn't prosper. And God does that a lot to us, especially when we're younger Christians and don't know a lot about spiritual warfare. Um, so this dream, I won't get into the whole detail. I've shared it in times past, and I'm not going to bore folks with the whole details again. They're very precious. But I died in this dream. I died. It was so literal, so like it really happened. I can't say more. It's like it really happened. I died. And, but when I died, I was in some strange city, like maybe downtown New York. And people had suits and dresses on, and they were going, like, coming and going to work and shopping. Very, you know, uh, had purpose going up and down the road, minding their own business. No cars were in the street. It was a cobblestone street, as I remember correctly. No cars in the street. And I'm walking down the center of this street, wondering, where am I? I don't see any angels. I don't see God. I don't know where I was. 
okay? And I, I knew I was in the spirit dimension of some sort, but it didn't make sense to me. So, okay, while I'm there in the road, I thought, well, I'm going to sing a song. I never could sing when I was alive. I don't sing well. Never expected to sing well. That's okay. I'm glad others can. Um, so I thought, I'll just sing a little song and, sound, and see what it sounds like up here in the spirit dimension. I thought, well, what will I sing? And I thought, well, why not just sing four words, Jesus, I love you. So that's what I did. I started singing, Jesus, I love you. And out of my mouth came wonderful sound. And it's, that's all I just kept saying over and over is, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Um, and uh, it didn't take long in saying those words. And I was standing in one place when I was doing this. And as I started doing it, it didn't take long. And I felt this wonderful feeling down at my feet. And I thought, well, what's that? And I looked down at my feet and it's like there were a bunch of these 4th of July sparklers somehow attached to my feet. They were lit and they were effervescing, you know, sparkling and uh, very bright, but it didn't burn. What I noticed is that it was joy. I, I was seeing joy at my feet and I could feel that joy. I thought, well, that's really interesting, but I wanted to sing this song and keep singing this song because I sounded so good, at least to me, you know? I, wow, I can sing. So I'm singing these words over and over. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. And as I sang those four words over and over, this electricity, I'll call it electricity, it was joy, but it reminded me of harmless electricity coming off my legs, started growing up higher, stayed at the bottom, but growing up and expanding. And as it was growing up my legs, it was feeling better and better. It was feeling beyond anything this world has ever enabled me to feel, okay? It was just incredible. The feeling, the, the euphoria of that joy, and it was coming up, and I thought, well, the more I sing, the more this joy is coming up my body, and in due time, it, it covered my entire body. It was out like a foot or two. I, I lost all track of how big it was, and I was just enraptured with this joy, and I was thinking, well, you know, if this is all heaven has for me, this is great because I don't care what else heaven might have for me in that moment. It's like, I can stand here for eternity uh, just enjoying this unspeakable joy that had encapsulated me, okay, and was growing. And then the thought came, well, I'm covered with it now. Why? Well, then it started going inside my mouth and going down. It stayed on the outside, but it started going on the inside and expanding. And the thought then came to me, this joy is never going to end. This joy is going to go on for eternity. And all I have to do is say these four words, Jesus, I love you. Wow, you know, kid with a new toy. I loved it. And then, and all of a sudden, this whole thing just shut right down. And I was in total blackness, total darkness. I've never, ever been in total darkness, blackness, like I was. I, I, for sure, I didn't know where I was then. And I can remember praying. I'm saying, Lord, where am I? What's going on? Am I about to die? Have I died? Or what? You know, I, I had no answers. I was asking God for understanding where I was and what I was. And not long, just, just seemed a few split seconds. And then I heard loud and clear this voice say to me, I have unlimited, unimaginable, unlimited joy for soul winners. 
I have eternal rewards of joy. He began to expound on this theme as time passed. I have unimaginable rewards of joy for soul winners. So keep doing what you're doing. I'm happy with it. Well, I won't tell you how long it took for me to wake up. It was a miracle for me to wake up out of that deep sleep. It took him forever, and I won't say any more than that, other than the point being is that it was after that experience that I began to ask God, why did you give me that experience? Well, number one, it was to keep doing the Precious Testimonies ministry. We were taking on so much demonic opposition. I didn't understand that the devil had that much latitude to try to talk somebody out of their call and their ministry. I dumb as a box of rocks when it came to just how much uh, latitude God has given him to, to speak to our minds and to other people and circumstances. Ways to talk you out of your call, especially if you've been called to be a soul winner. And that's primarily who these videos are to reach. Uh, soul winners who are active, those who are going to become soul winners. And I hope everybody <laughs> who hears this video wants to become a soul winner. I, I believe God gave me this dream a great deal to encourage others to look at soul winning as a number one priority in their life beyond growing in their relationship with Jesus Christ, of course, okay? And so, we've endeavored to do that. We praise God. He enabled us to continue to pursue. We went from needing Christians to testify quality testimonies to where God then gave us YouTube and so many people putting up priceless YouTube of their own up on YouTube and they aren't getting that much coverage. Satan doesn't want them to get that much coverage. There's a huge battle going on to keep people from receiving, especially the unsaved from receiving what God has available for them by just listening to born-again testimonies that glorify Jesus Christ. Uh, and so God began to say, don't look for other Christians. Don't try to pull teeth out of Christians who don't see the value and opportunity to be sharing their born-again testimonies and you videotaping them. Go to YouTube and uh, give testimonies that are already up there that I assign. Uh, give them greater exposure, okay? Uh, so instead of it being in one place, now it's on two if it goes on the Precious Testimonies channel. And there are a few other channels. They also put the same testimonies on with different titles to get a potentially larger viewing audience. But I, I, I don't want to say too much. I can overwhelm people. I just go on and on and on about this topic. Um, and there is much to be said about it. But I just want to simply emphasize something that I think a lot of us Christians don't think about. Uh, most of Christianity, at least in America, is geared toward what can God do for me? Jesus, what can you do for me? Father, what can you do for me? Holy Spirit, what can you do for me? And that's not why God created us. God created us to ask the question frequently, what can I do to please you, God? Okay, what can I do to please you? Uh, he's given us enough promises in his word that uh, we'll be rewarded handsomely through eternity, depending upon what we do after we become saved, born again. Okay, and uh, so... I just want to share another testimony. I've shared this a few more times, but it was so impacting to me. And it's taken a great deal of time for me to unravel the revelation that was in this experience. Uh, I was out witnessing some time back 
uh, was in the Grand Rapids, Michigan area, and I was down in the poverty section where receptivity is the greatest for spiritual things. And it was hot. It was in the middle of the summer, a very hot day, very hot. I was tired. There was hardly anybody out that I could pass a Jesus did it flyer to. I was passing out Jesus did it flyers. I hope you know what those are by now. Uh, I've got them all over Precious Testimonies. Got, you know, please link to it. Please copy, paste it. Please pray about getting 50 copies free from us so you can pass them out, make copies from them. I feel that's something God has assigned to my wife and I, Kathleen, to do to make it easy for people to have one condensed piece of paper that others can make copies from uh, at their own expense, however many they want. Um, and uh, though we put out other resources as well, but that day I was focusing on seeing who might want a Jesus did it flyer, Jesus did it track. And uh, I went to an old, uh, a little convenience store, small convenience store primarily selling liquor. And uh, there was a guy out back in the shade, sprawled out, he had a six pack of beer, uh, by him. He had about three or four of them gone, empties. Uh, had a little bite of food of something, hamburger there that he had eaten. But he's laying there and I thought, well, I'll go see, you know, if God wants to use me to plant water in his life. So I went over, sat down beside him, started making small talk. Could tell he was drunk out of his mind, drunk out of his mind. Uh, and the guy was, I don't know, 50, 55. Looked like he's about 100 because of the alcohol. Could see how much it had taken a toll on the guy's life. And we talked a bit about uh, his life. He was pretty open to me about it. I won't go into it other than he faced a lot of challenges and turned to alcohol to bury his sorrow and was a hardcore alcoholic. He told me that. He says, I'm hardcore and I don't care and I'll probably die this way. So I brought it around, well when you die, you know, where, where, where are you going to go? Do you know where you're going to go? He says, yeah, I'm going to heaven. I said, well, how do you know that? He said, well, I've accepted Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. I said, really? You know that? He said, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've known that for years. I said, so you don't have any problem with that? No. I said, so you've done that? He said, oh, yeah. So he says, when my time is done, I, I, you know, I know I'll be in heaven. I said, wow, great. That's awesome. So, you know, now, <laughs> now what's there to talk about? Other than, you want me to pray for this alcoholism that's holding you in prison, my friend? And I, I, I said something to that effect, but he says, no, thank you. I, okay. So I'm not ready. To, so it's like, okay, let's go find somebody who's not saved. That's why I'm out here. So I got up and started walking away. And the God a few yards away and God said, stop. Turn around and take a good look at him. Okay. So I turned around and took a good look at him. And I said, Holy you know, Lord, what, what, what do you want me to see other than somebody who's wasted his life? He's so drunk he can't even stand up. And he says, the Holy Spirit spoke to my spirit. Okay, that's how that goes. And he says, what's the value of his soul once he gets to heaven? What's the value of his spirit, if you will? But God said, what's the value of his soul? I said, well, I don't know. I have no idea. He said, well, let me ask it this way. What can I do through him, through eternity, once he's in heaven? Well, that's an impossible question for any human being to answer. I said, I don't know, Lord. You, you know, you're a miracle working God. You can do anything. He said, that's right. He said, so you go about trying to get him saved, okay? You go about planting and watering, be faithful in that. Trust me to lead and guide. Trust that I will not allow your labors to be in vain in planting and watering the truth of the gospel. What Jesus accomplished for humanity. 
You sow into the harvest field of the world, and you will reap generously eternal rewards. For you, Norm, that will be laying up rewards for yourself in heaven. I needed to hear that that day. I've needed to remember that many days since. Well, my nose keeps itching. Ah, if you had a nose as big as mine, that's a lot of itching that can happen. Thank you, Jesus, for my big nose that itches. Um, in time, God has given me more understanding about the soul in it. And something that maybe we don't think a whole lot about. It's like, consider this. God says, God's quickened this to me. And those of you who are soul winners, actively soul winners, passing out tracts, passing out Bibles, testimony books, Jesus did it, flyers, or very wonderful resources out there that's challenging people to give their life to the Lord. Um, thank God for all of that. You, you folks know this, but perhaps there's people that this they're just you know, going to church or sitting in the pews listening to messages and they're getting antsy because just hearing messages doesn't seem to be getting it all the time. Well, you know what? It won't get it all the time. There, there, there's time to learn, but there's a time to start sowing into the harvest field. Jesus was the one who said, the harvest is great, the laborers are few. Pray and ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers into the harvest field. Well, if we pray that prayer and ask the Lord to send everybody else, but we're not willing to begin sowing and reaping, sowing uh, and uh, planting and watering, I should say, in the harvest field of lost souls, uh, I don't know if God's too impressed with our prayer. We need to ask ourselves, do you want me, Lord, uh, planting and watering seeds in your harvest field? Seeds of what? Seeds of salvation. What is it that God has said is going to go to the four corners of the earth before Jesus is sent back to this planet? It's the gospel message. It's the Jesus did it flyer. What God gave humanity through Jesus Christ, through his death, burial, and resurrection, okay? So, I pray that if you are bored with Christianity, if you're bored, or feel like you're just not complete, there's got to be more. My friend, I'm telling you, consider actively getting involved in soul winning efforts. I've said it, a lot of people haven't heard it. They get overwhelmed with all the content on the internet, but I, uh, no, I need to say this for some other parts of this. I get going and then it's too long and I lose people. So that's one of my many character flaws. So my friends, I encourage everyone listening to this. If you're not sure about what God is trying to communicate to us about soul winning in Matthew 6, 19 through 21, the greatest treasure that we can lay up in heaven for God and for ourselves is a lost soul. A lost soul has more value to God than all of the accumulated wealth assets of this world. God can create assets. He can create uncountable financial wealth. He can. But it doesn't serve a purpose because he's looking for lost souls to surrender to his lordship. He's created the human race to glorify him. He's created the human race for us to be asking ourselves, 
Why am I here? What's my purpose down here in this life? Well, eventually, if we're willing to hear the Holy Spirit has said, in part, he will say, I put you down here to lay up for yourselves strangers in heaven. Life is an opportunity to reach the unsaved. Yeah, but God, I'm struggling. I'm broke. I'm sick. I'm diseased. My, my kids and my wife and my boss. And that doesn't change God's perspective of why he put us here, you here. We all can be engaged in soul winning efforts. Well, I'm an invalid. I can't get out of bed. I can't pass out tracks. I can't put Bibles on truck stops. I can't, I can't, I can't. Wait a minute. Can you pray? Can you pray? Sure you can pray. You don't even have to have use of your vocal cords. As long as you got your brain functioning, you can pray. About what? Pray for people that the Holy Spirit gives to you that need to be saved. A prayer ministry reaching the loss is one of the most priceless ministries that we can have. And no matter how old we are, as long as our brain works, we can trust God to give us names of people um, who need salvation. If that doesn't seem to be working, well, <laughs> um, uh, go to social media, Facebook, whatever. There's a lot of people out there that are lost, that need Jesus. They talk about anything and everything but salvation. And uh, so anyway, uh, you know, there is no excuse why we can't be engaged in doing the work of planting and watering in the lives of the unsaved. And with cell phones and the internet, my I we have opportunity to go around the world planting and watering seeds of truth, the gospel message um, that the first church didn't have. So uh, let us use our cell phones. Let us use the internet. Let, let us use the technology God has given humanity uh, to lay up rewards for ourselves in heaven. And finally, you know what? If it still doesn't tweak your crank about laying up for yourself rewards in heaven, then do it for God. You know, Jesus died to save souls, and he's included human beings to be a part of helping that process. Now, lay them up for Jesus. He won't complain. He won't be uh, unhappy about it. What does scripture say? For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Uh, we can get into more about joy, and I'm going to be speaking more about joy in different segments moving forward. Um, there are different dimensions of joy in eternity. Not everybody's going to get the same degree or frequency of joy. Um, soul winners will get the greatest dimensions of joy. God has told me that. Some would disagree with that. It's okay. I'm just sharing what the Holy Spirit has shared with me. There's nothing more valuable to the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit than being engaged in trying to help win lost souls. Uh, many people out there in Christianity talk about discipleship, discipleship, discipleship. Oh, it's all about discipleship. It's not about soul winning, Brother Norm. It's about discipleship. Oh, yeah. I've had many Bible scholars tell me that. Well, somebody's got to get saved first before they can become a disciple of God's Word. But you know what's missing in discipleship that I see? Worldwide. We aren't making soul winner disciples. We're making be an authority on God's Word. Read God's Word. Every day read God's Word. Read, read, read. Memorize it. Teach it. Pass it along. That's good. But where are we being discipled? Who are we listening to that's engaged in discipleship that is telling us to pursue reaching lost souls? Those numbers are getting smaller and smaller, i found. Why? Because the devil doesn't want Christians engaged in soul-winning efforts. 
do everything else, but don't give yourself to soul winning efforts. If he can't get those eternal rewards that's available to you, he doesn't want you to get them either. And he's been given a lot of latitude to try to talk you out of the importance of being an active soul winner. So with that, God bless.